Hello, today we are going to install alongside Windows 11 Pro Ubuntu 2404. So, this is a virtual machine, has Windows installed. The um, virtual hard disk is large enough, 500 gigabytes. I have installed from the official Windows 11 ISO. Very important to install Windows 11 first and Ubuntu 2404 as the second operating system. I'm selecting the Ubuntu 24.04 ISO and let's make sure that it boots from the CD-ROM. And this should be it. We can start the virtual machine. The computer should boot from ISO, from the Ubuntu 24.04 installer. The computer has started in graphical user interface mode. And we need to choose our language, English, no accessibility, English US. Install Ubuntu. Interactive install. Web browser, browse basic utilities. Sounds OK. Next. I do not need any of these. Install Ubuntu alongside Windows Boot Manager. Erase disk and install Ubuntu. Manual installation. So we have just one storage device, just one uh, virtual disk, Windows and the size of the virtual hard disk is 500 gigabytes. Windows 11 is installed in there. So we'll need to tell the Ubuntu installer to shrink a bit the um, GPT partition where the Windows 11 installation resides, make a bit of uh, empty room and then the Ubuntu installer will create in there the needed partitions and install the Ubuntu 2404 operating system. So we'll do this, install Ubuntu alongside Windows Boot Manager. Okay, let's see what are the options in here just as the A3 Windows Boot Manager 500 gigabytes? Sounds okay. It wants to allocate 180 gigabytes for Ubuntu and the rest 256 gigabytes for Windows. How can we increase this number? Let's make this 50-50. Or the larger one to be Ubuntu, but very similar sizes. So Ubuntu 2404, 290 megabytes, Windows 240 gigabytes. Sounds okay, next. And now we create a Linux user. Computer name, password, and this is just usual options when installing Ubuntu, even if um, 
installing without uh, installing alongside Windows 11. So Linux uh, user account, password, computer name, next. New York. And let's see what it does. It says partition SDA3 resized. SDA5 created and formatted EXT4 for Ubuntu. And then SDA1 slash boot slash EFI. I'm not sure uh, if this is safe. SDA1 to word slash boot slash EFI. But let's see. Install. So the Ubuntu 24.04 installer it's, is doing its things. We'll be back once the installer is close to the finish line. I see that the Ubuntu 24.04 installer towards the end will also run an apt um, update and apt upgrade, which installs the latest software on your computer. When the installer is finished, your computer is uh, up to date. And now the installer has finished and we can uh, restart the computer. Mm, we should probably shut down the computer. Power off. While the computer is shutting down, we'll need to configure the boot options. We only want to boot from the virtual disk, not from the CD-ROM. And we can also remove the ISO from the DVD drive. The virtual machine has finished shutting down. Let's uh, check one more time. So no ISO inside the DVD drive. We have the virtual hard disk, which is of type SATA. That's supported by both Windows 11 and uh, Ubuntu 24.04. So it's not of type VertIO. But uh, you can uh, use VertIO also. Boots from the virtual hard disk. Let's start the computer for the first time. It boots into Ubuntu Shim EFI file, which then leads to the grub boot loader. So one executable file with extension EFI has been loaded from the um, UEFI file system. Let's restart. So we can log into Ubuntu 24.04 just fine. Let's try to restart in Windows. Start. Again, the same thing, Ubuntu shim .efi file. In here, we're going to select the penultimate option, which is Windows Boot Manager. This is the boot screen from Windows. This is the equivalent of the desktop manager. So you can log in as your user. This is the user admin having logged into 
his um, desktop. There's a C drive of uh, 226 gigabytes. We can look at disk management to see the different partitions, the large ones. C, this is the one for Windows, 226 gigabytes. And then um, the one for Ubuntu, 272 gigabytes. There's a EFI system partition, which is partition one. Then there's partition the C partition. And then there's five, the same that we saw in the Ubuntu 2404 installer. So one is um, FE, three is Windows, and five is Ubuntu EXT4, the slash root partition. Okay, let's see if Windows will reboot to grub, so to UEFI shim.efi, or if it will boot to the Windows Boot Manager EFI file. So it boots into boot mgfw.efi which means boot manager firmware.efi file. So did not boot into Ubuntu shim file. We don't see grub. Instead, it booted into its own bootloader. This is because Windows, before actually doing reboot, will tell uh, UEFI via the UEFI partition, via UEFI variables, that it wants that the next uh, boot is into its own boot manager, not into anything else. So let's boot into UEFI and change the boot order from there. You can go to the Windows Start menu, search for UEFI. The result is change advanced startup options in settings. Restart now, restart now. And now it will boot into a menu where it asks if you want to boot into the UEFI text user interface, which will say yes to that. So advanced options, is this one, advanced options again, and then we go UEFI firmware settings. It will reboot the computer once more. But this time it uh, reboots into the text user interface of UEFI. In here we can go boot manager and select Ubuntu. By default is um, Windows boot manager selected. We can um, do it like this. So each time we boot, we enter UEFI text user interface. So this menu. And from here we select Ubuntu. And then it boots into Ubuntu Shim EFI, which goes then to Grub, and then from there we can go to Ubuntu. Let's uh, restart. We can't power off. Restart this thing. And now it booted into the default option, which is uh, written to the UEFI variables, which is the boot manager of Windows. Let's see if we can boot into the UEFI boot manager without um, going to the Windows settings. Let's go shut down from here. 
And let's try to enter the um, UEFI text user interface by pressing escape and F12 million of times. And one of either escape or F12 managed to get us into the boot manager. We probably can also edit the boot order permanently, or we can just select each time which of the options do we want. Maybe it's safer to just uh, select Ubuntu once you finish your Windows session and not do any more uh, permanent changes in the boot menu. Like this. So this is what I would do if I'm going for a week to only use Ubuntu, then there's no problem. Just reboot and it will reboot into Ubuntu, Shim, EFI and that's Grub. So from there you can start rebooting and start uh, using Ubuntu again. Once you go to Windows, Whatever, you decide. If you want to make the changes permanent, then this, this is the way to do it. You go to UEFI, the boot manager order in there and change it. If not, you can always go to the boot manager. On uh, some motherboards, there's a different shortcut to get to the boot manager and a different shortcut to get to the UEFI text user interface. In this case, probably it's um, showing the same interface if I uh, boot, if at boot time I want to go to the UFI text user interface or if I want to go to the UFI boot manager. Boot manager in the sense that you just for the next start of the, comp for the current start of the computer, you're selecting the option that you want your computer to boot in. So nothing permanent, just for this current start of the computer. So this is it. Once uh, Windows updates will be installed, once new versions of Windows 11 will be installed, once you get to Windows 12, etc., there's chances that the boot order will be changed back by uh, Windows such that uh, boot FW, boot mgfw.efi, so the Windows is um, boot manager EFI file is on the first position. So if you've changed that uh, Ubuntu should be on the first position in the boot order, then you might need to revisit that setting from time to time. Once you feel that Windows has changed the boot order again, such that uh, the Windows boot order, the bootloader is uh, the first one in the list. Thank you.